Hello everybody, Ms. Storm here. Welcome back to Kerbal Space Program. In the last episode, we got the Jewel Science Mission back home to Kerbin. Went through a, kind of a long process there, uh, but got its science payload back home. And we unlocked a few things. Uh, most notably, we got some better solar panels. We got some better plasma engines. We got some nuclear fuel systems, so I should be able to refuel our reactor-driven craft for nuclear fuel, so that's good. Bring home the depleted stuff. Um, nuclear fuel containment. I think, oh, there's a centrifugal whirly jig nuclear reprocessor. Replace, process the depleted fuel into enriched uranium or extract Xeon as a decay process. So, what we could do is... Um, that would involve putting another module on the current station. Not a bad idea. I might have to throw one of those up on the station um, to reprocess nuclear fuel, because we could use the Xenon. Um... Or we could reprocess the fuel. So, yeah. Orbital megastructures. Oh. Well, how about that? Um, so, yeah. What we need to do now is get the... ELU probe back home. And I went ahead and actually got the probe back to curb and orbit because that was just a lot of you know time accelerating running 10 minute 15 20 minute long you know burn maneuvers <laughs> to to do all of that but that is now actually in orbit and ready to return its payload so we'll go ahead and get the payload back home and uh see what we can unlock from there and start working on the next project which is going to be the next large manned vehicle for further exploration efforts i haven't even begun to put together the concept for what that thing is going to be but uh you know that's that's part of the fun I'm trying to figure it out all right, now there is actually a couple of things I want to check here first before we move on. And that is, I need to go back to the jewel. Unstation solar modules, oh yeah, that failed, that failed launch. The jewel probe. I think I forgot to turn its reactor off, so its, its reactor may be completely depleted at this point. Um, possibly. We'll see. In a moment. Okay, there you are. Everything's overheating. Okay. Core life is at zero. Deactivate the reactor. So that means that this guy is going to slowly run out of power. Now this is a valuable piece of hardware. Um, and I'd rather not lose uh, usefulness for it. So what I'll probably have to do is uh, bring up something to deal with it. I'll have to come up with uh, what that mission will be. Um, it'll probably have to wait until we actually have nuclear reprocessing capability. And then I'll want to steadily get all of these guys over to probably the station where we'll go ahead and reprocess their fuel. Um, and 
resupply these reactors. So, yeah. Um, that's going to be the plan. But I'll probably have to dock some big piece of equipment over here to be able to fly that where it needs to be. Alright, so I just wanted to check that, and yeah, uh, it was what I was afraid of. I forgot to turn that off before I did all the time accelerating to get the other probe back home, and uh, yeah, killed the fuel. So, yeah, it is what it is. Alright, so our ELU probe should be there. Wait for that to load here. All right, so let's not make that same mistake. Let's go ahead and deactivate that reactor. Preserve whatever fuel's left in there. It's got what? Well, I don't know. We have to restart the reactor. One year, 43 days of uh, fuel life left back in that reactor. Okay. So. Here we go. Let's go ahead and uh, fold this guy up. Retract that antenna. And then let's go ahead and decouple the node. Actually, we need to uh, use the RCS here. To back that off, give us a little room. And now here we are. Okay, so let's go ahead and activate our engines. You know, the staging gets a little goofy. So we'll do that manually. All right. Amos Retrograde. Are we clear? I think we're clear. All right, so periapsis. Actually, how is our heat shield depleted? No, no, not completely depleted. Um. Okay, so we actually have some ablator. Well, how about that? I don't know why the ablator the ablator depletes, but whatever. Maybe in the future, what I need to do is set this up so that we can bring up another. No. No, that's a bit too overcomplicated. If I just do this right, it'll be fine. All right, so our periapsis height. Well, that's pretty low. It is at 88, so I want to... Oh, we are pointing in the wrong direction. We are pointing that way. Okay. Hold on, hold on. Uh, control from here. There we go. Oh, please don't hit it. Please don't hit it. Oh, too much, too much, too much, too much. All right, flip me around again. I want that periapsis to be around 25 kilometers. There we go. And then we're going to retract. No, 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 don't. 
Don't need to retract those just yet. Come on, get them back open. All right, let's point uh, normal to our orbit. I did this. I did this spin up thing before, but we're just going to go ahead and do it pointing normal, and we're going to decouple the propellant. All right. And point is retrograde, and uh, let's get us to our atmospheric reentry. There we are. Um, electric charge is actually fine, but we're about to have sunrise. So what I'd like to do is top that off and then retract. You know what? I'm going to let them rip off. I am going to keep the solar panels out and I'm going to let them just rip off. It won't hurt anything other than the solar panels. So, oh, I've got the Aurora. So we're coming around the South Pole. All right. We are coming around the South Pole, right? Yep, South Pole. Alright, so that'll keep us charged for as long as possible. Because the last thing in the world I want to do is run out of electric charge right when I'm going to need to be deploying parachutes. Let's go ahead and go four times. Periapsis height is now negative. We're going to hit the ground. Let's go down to one time because I want to see these uh, these solar panels go bye byes. Like man, you'd think the aerodynamic stress at this point. I mean, because they are basically acting as kind of. Uh, Makeshift air brakes. Oh, there they go. Where are we going to land, by the way? I think we're going to land like... Oh, in the water. Okay. I think... No, no, that's that's green. That is land. There's a landmass there? Apparently. Okay, so we are through heating. Um We survived. Good. Still have some ablator left. So once we're below about 250 or so, well, we could probably go ahead and deploy the chutes now. But still got time. Still got time. Yeah, okay, there we go. We're below 250. Go ahead and Deploy them out, and yeah, that's the way they're supposed to look. Because they're supposed to be kind of 
off at an angle. No, we are going to hit the water. Well, how about that? All right, four times acceleration. Go ahead and jettison the heat shields. I would say a leisurely 3.6 meters per second, but I mean, if you actually think about that, that's not exactly slow. All right, and splash down. Okay, let's go ahead and recover the vessel. Let's see what we got. We got 2,330.3 science earned. Excellent. And actually, there is one other thing that I need to do that I think I forgot to do. Last episode. Not last episode. Before I started this episode. is head on over to the station and this is going to take a minute all right there we are Okay, so one other thing I did do was run another mining mission. If, oh. So we should have ore on board. Actually, all the ore has been processed. Interesting. How's our lithium supplies? Lithium's full. Because what I did do is I turned on this thing to convert it to fertilizer. So it must have convert all converted all the ore for into fertilizer and then the um the hydroponics bay used up all the fertilizer. So uh yeah, I guess you know, that happens when you you know accelerate for almost two years. But we're topped off on lithium, so that's good. Now, what I wanted to do is look at you. All right, you have a little bit of data left, but you have some science. So go ahead and transmit the science back home. So I'd like every point that I can get my hands on. There we go. And then actually, I think probably once, once that's done, we're going to be kind of out of science processing that we can do here because there's no more, unless what I do is See, it just takes so long.
I wonder... Like, how much crew can you put on, put on this thing? You can put two crew in there. So one of the things that I could do is, anytime I run a science mission, is bring... Bring it back here? Bring the data back here instead of, you know, landing it. And then have it all processed through the lab. Because you get so much more output if you do that. Or you just make sure that whatever vessel you build has a lab on board. So, I don't know. Maybe for small probes, like if I do small unmanned probes, which I might still do, small unmanned probes, we would bring them back and dock them with the station here and then process them through this lab. But any large manned vessels are going to have a lab on board. So. That's done. Alright. So let's see what we can unlock here. Now, another question is going to be, where is the mission going to go? Because we're going to need to build this manned vessel, and we also kind of need to figure out what the mission is going to be. I mean, ultimately what I'd like is for it to be able to hit every planet in the system. Um... But what is the initial mission going to be? Let's see. We have a few things we could do. Um, let's see. Where have we been manned to? We went manned to Moho, I believe. Yes, we did do that. Um, yeah, because I had to do an emergency refueling of the, of the longbow before we decommissioned it. To bring it back, uh, we've been to Duna. Yep, that was the whole arrow breaking maneuvers. So we could do Eve, right? Dress or Jewel or Elu. Jewel provides potentially the largest mission profile here. Because of its moon system. You know, we've got Tylo, Laith, Fall. Laith actually has an atmosphere. I need to um, double check what his atmospheric composition is. Val looks like just a, an ice ball. All right, so a manned mission to Jewel with multiple landings scheduled. I think that sounds good. All right, so that is going to be what we're going to try. How long do I have to actually do such a thing? When is our next jewel window? Our next jewel transfer window is... Let's see, it's, it's year 16, day 25. Oh, our departure will be year 16, day 335. So we have... 110 days, or 310 days, um, to assemble a vessel and get it there. Travel time is going to be two years, 79 days. We'll give that, like, a buffer of about three years to get there, probably to get home, too. Tota Delta V to get there, optimum, is going to be about 5,000 meters per second. So we're going to need way more than that, or a way to refuel in situ. 
So that might be a thing we think about. And then because we let's go jewel back to Kerbin. Is that is when we're talking about potentially leaving. I mean depending on how long we want to take to get home. Yeah, about another five thousand to get home. And Travel time, two years, three years. But we're going to have to sit in the system for probably another couple of years. So we're talking like what? A total mission duration of... Um, let's see, three, six... Oh, that's the wrong thing. Jewel. There you go. Uh, nine years? Maybe? Just for... Um, just for margin. Safety margins. Okay. Okay, so that is going to make... Things interesting. Oh, I need to go to the science facility to, um... Okay, so we're going to need absolute minimum of, of 10,000 meters per second of total delta V from ejection from Kerbin. All right? And when we would decide to leave the Kerbin system, we need to have a minimum of 10,000 meters per second of delta V on board. Or a way to refuel the vessel with a total delta v load at fully fueled of five to six thousand meters per second at delta v okay okay so what we have the specialized plasma propulsion which gives us the pulse inductive thrusters um But I don't think these are going to provide the thrust that we're going to need. I mean, ultimately, leads to exotic plasma that there's nothing there. So we're a long ways off from Alcubierre drives. So that's not a thing we're going to worry about there. Fusion power. There's nothing in there. Anything down this line? No. Okay. Exotic nuclear po power, antimatter power, unified field theory. Don't have any mods that fit into those categories. So, experimental nuclear power, there's nothing in here. So, nuclear propulsion. Poseidon trimodal atomic rocket motor. That's interesting. 310 kilonewtons. Cilia atomic aerospike rocket. Very interesting. Now, what I could really use here are the high-performance fuel systems, specialized storage, getting out to, like, gigantic rockets. Because these are the big, the big engines. These lead to the really big fuel tanks. So, I think that's what we're going to spend our points on here. We're going to grab high-performance fuel systems. 
orbital assembly. That would be also really nice. But when we're going to get the experimental rocketry and Osprey liquid fuel engine and Buzzard liquid fuel engine. Those are really, really, really big engines. Um, specialized fuel storage. We'll go for that. All right. So there goes our, our science. So we're going to need those to lift parts. All right. So let's see what we can come up with here. I think the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to put together a new propulsion module that is going to be kind of the the starting point for our new our new vehicle and we have our new colossus magnetoplasma dynamic engine uh, let's see, 242.2 kilonewtons. So it's more powerful than two of these by itself. Requires 3,000 electric charge per second and is more efficient than these guys. So, there we are. All right, so let's stack Let's stack a fuel tank on here. And let's just see what kind of numbers we get. All right, so we have our new lithium tanks. 38,000 Delta V. Okay, that'll, that'll do. So that is a 2.5 meter engine, okay. Thrust. Okay. All right. So one by itself needs three thousand electric charge per second. Okay. So what kind of reactors can we get? This guy produces six thousand electric charge per second and weighs twenty-three tons. Hmm. This guy produces another 2,000 EC. So that is... What, 8,000? Do I want two reactors? Do I want two reactors? I don't know. Because, let's say... Uh, what is the size of this thing? Is this a 3.75? Yeah, that's 3.75 meter. Uh, structural adapters. Let's see what we got. Do I have a 3.75 meter to two 2.5 meter... No, but I have that. Okay, so that is actually very interesting. <laughs> okay, okay. That, that's probably not what we're interested in. That'd be more something like this, and then we could actually continue to stack down the center. So, no, that's not what we're looking for. Um, hmm, hmm, hmm. A configurable adapter. Let's see. 2.5 meter mountings. Um, I don't think... Now this one, it is configurable. Okay, mounting. Oh, 
how many 1.25 meters or one 2.5 meter okay so now that's not what we're looking for either well that's something else holy cow um <laughs> Uh, well, like how many I could I could put what would it be? Man, they do not wanna they do not wanna kinda slide in there, do they? Because they want a radially mount, which is weird. Um Very flat adapter piece. Yeah, I mean, I could do that and then do this. But that's not what I'm looking for. Now, there were, like, thruster plates, sky crane, no, that's not what I'm looking for there. Uh, maybe we can go for a different category. Let's say filter by cross section, and we'll go to 3.75 meter parts. Yeah, that's that adapter. I think it goes out to th from three to five meter. Um, 3.75 to five. Uh, let's see. Adapter tank again. 3.75 to five. That's two and a half to three point seven five. Flat adapters. Mercury extensible centrifuge. Deployed crew capacity fourteen. A truly enormous centrifuge of twenty five meter diameter when fully deployed. Allows a spin gravity of up for up to 14 brave kerbals at 0.6 g good god uh so that's how it packs and then when it deploys it deploys into that position and we can it can house 14 kerbals and then you can start rotation I love it and I want it but yeah yeah that 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 might be a thing we think about now I know it's there Pilgrim extensible centrifuge for 10 kerbals. Okay, so that's not a like a ring. It's just a set. So you'd have lower gravity toward the inside, higher gravity on the outside. Um, would make a bit more sense probably for this project. Again, something to think about. Uh, 
All right, well, if we don't have an adapter that allows us to stick things on the end, then what we'll have to do is probably have to bolt stuff to the side. Which is fine. That's perfectly fine. That's, that's a perfectly valid way of doing things. Um, so... The question will be, do we go for 8,000 8, electric charge? Which will allow me to support two engines plus anything else I would want to put on the thing, and I wouldn't have to worry about solar panels. No, I think I'm going to limit the... I want to limit this to just the reactor to just powering the engines. We'll do that. Well, we're heading out to Joule, so you know, solar is an issue. That's fine. Uh, what we're going to need is we're going to need a tank for additional nuclear fuel. nuclear fuel drum that only comes in what is the life period of this reactor five years ten minutes it carries how much fuel? 770 units. Gets it 5 years. This is another 960. So that would give it 10 years. Now supposedly there's like... Side mounted tanks. Well, here's what we would do. I would need an adapter. Back to the adapters again. Nope, not that one. Okay, and that's... There we go. That's what I'd need right there. And then you would strap on there. And so that would give me the fuel endurance that I would need. Okay. All right, so we're gonna need two engine sections to bolt on here or dock on. So, Clampatron docking ports. And although I won't be using them, if I were to say, put a couple of these big lithium tanks Well, we'll just attach them like that for a second. With our big magnetoplasma dynamic engines, what are we talking about here? 17,000 meters per second of delta V for just the reactor with that much lithium. Okay, so yeah, we're either going to need to be able to carry a lot more lithium than this, or 
Um, we're going to need refueling capability. All right, but that's that's a consideration for another time. Now, do I want the docking ports to be on the reactor itself? Or do, will I want like another module to attach above it that's going to have the docking ports on it where I can dock stuff? Because this thing is going to need thermal considerations as well. So we're going to need like a big long thermal spar, which you know I've done that before. Yeah, I think that's what we'll do. We'll just send this up. Or I could actually attach that here. So I don't think there's any reason why I shouldn't. I just need the right part. That won't work. Um, hmm. Probably... Oh. That structural tube will suffice. And then what we'll do is we will stick... No, those are going to be too small. Docking connector X1. Okay, oh, that's a linear docking connector? That's interesting. Extra large Gripatron linear. Oh. Well, how about that? That. I think makes sense for bolt for docking stuff on the side because then what I can use is instead of using the um, the cylindrical tanks, what I can use are let's see, do you actually have any? No, no, no. You don't actually have anything you can load. Why is that not getting put away? Oh, is it because... Where is it? There it is. There we go. It would be this guy right there. Why did... Like four of them. with lithium cores and just out of curiosity we would throw this guy on there but I really would only want two delta V 20,000 now we're talking. Now, of course, we wouldn't want four on there, but that's fine. And then we could dock those, and we could put the linear docking ports on these guys to dock there. Okay, so that's good. That works for me. But I need a docking connector to cap this thing off with. Do we have a 3.75 meter? That's a decoupler. Docking ring. 
That's a decoupler. I don't think I have a 3.75 meter docking ring. I believe there is one that exists. Let me just save this as um, uh, heavy, um, heavy reactor module. We'll call that that. Save it. Let's leave the the VAB. I'm not sure we're going to launch anything today. I'm not sure we're going to launch anything. It's This is just going to be design work. There it is. The Mondo. I need 300 more science. Payload fairing, 7.5 meter. Okay. Um, hmm. So, either I find 300 more science somewhere, or we deal with 2.5 meter... Docking connectors. And just run adapters. Because I don't think we're going to need anything bigger than that for the rest of the ship. I certainly don't think so. Um, because this thrust, thrust block is going to be the big deal. Alright, fine. That should work. We can go and do... That flat adapter with that docking connector. And actually what we're going to want to do here is, is, come on, take that off, is I'm going to want to stack some batteries. And... Let's take that battery stack out of there. Let's put in our guidance unit. Our battery stack. Yeah, that ought to do. Now, I don't want to fire up the reactor because this thing doesn't have any thermal. The reactor will immediately shut down. But what I probably will do is give it... some retractable solar panels. Just for its initial launch. And then once we're done with it, the solar panels will go away. Now what I probably should also do is throw on a uh, docking port there. Just in case, you know, I want to dock something on there. All right, all right, all right. That will do. And I think that's something we can actually launch. Now, I'm gonna do, you know, action group one to toggle the panels. Oh, I forgot something. That needs to go in there. You need um, some short range communications or else that's not gonna work. There we go. All right. Well, I think this is actually launchable. That's ready to go. Um...
So let's see, what do we want to do as far as payload? Or how we're going to get this thing into orbit? No, that thing's not large enough. Three point seven five. Okay. That ought to work. And let's see, what kind of new Ooh. Five meter fuel tanks. All right. I like that. And new side strap on, you know, uh, tanks there. And so you should be 3.75 meter tank. Yeah, there you are. Now we don't need to get this thing to the moon, we just need to get it to orbit. Alright, so we're going to need some control here, no, no, control there, it's going to need some communi uh, communications, and some onboard batteries, not much though, just a little bit of battery, there you go. And then that should last long enough. That should last long enough. Throw some small panels in there. Yeah, that'll be fine. And you are going to need a big reaction wheel. That'll do there. Yeah, this thing doesn't have any RCS, but it doesn't need to. This is this is the thing everything else is gonna dock to. So everything else. This is going to dock to this is going to need some some amount of RCS of some description. Which is fine. All right. And then engine We got all kinds of new engines. We got these engines, which I think those are Monopropellant engines. Okay, yeah, we don't need to worry about those. Um, actually, what might be better is to go by 3.75 meter. What kind of engines we got? Cryogenic engines. Don't need to worry about that. Those are cryogenic engines as well. Uh, we've got this engine, which is a, a good engine. We've used a bunch. Thrust weight, 1600 meters per second. And then what if I threw that tank on there? And this engine. That should get you to orbit. That should get you to orbit.
All right. Yeah, we don't need, like, strap-on tanks or anything else. I'm pretty sure. Now, what I probably am going to want is some sort of fin system. At the bottom there. For stability. And this is just really, really simple. Um, throw the fairing on. Throw the clamps on. Make sure the clamps go when the engine goes. There we go. And yeah, that ought to do it. That ought to do it. You know, I said we probably weren't going to launch anything today. I guess we are. Let's go ahead and get this get this guy in orbit. Hopefully, that's enough Delta V. Well, we'll find out in a minute. Save. Launch. All right, so here we are. I'm gonna use a good old mech jeb and uh, see how it goes, because this should be the most efficient launch. Engage the autopilot, and let's see what it does. the weight yep, throttle down for max Q get some max Q real fast back up and so we're through max Q all right we're gonna hit main engine cutoff pretty soon here then we'll separate and fire the second stage There we go. Now that'd be one thing I'd like to be able to do in KSP2. Hopefully there'd be some mechanisms in there where you could then take that over and uh, maybe have recoverable first stages. That should be pretty awesome. Or to be able to maybe have an AI 
you know, or some sort of autopilot fly it. Or maybe multiplayer. There's something up there. What is that? There's definitely something there. Can I can I target you? That I think is Eve. But that is definitely a piece of hardware. Which I cannot tell what it would probably be. That's the closest thing, but that's not in the position where... Hmm. Don't know. That's not telling me. But we are now in orbit. Excellent. So, we can go ahead and decouple. Oh, and uh, I kind of didn't put any way to back that off. But that's okay. I can just use the main engines. Give me a little, give me a little, a little push. There we go. Retrograde. And let's... Deorbit. How much Delta V's left in this thing? Well, 300 more meters per second. There we go. Alright, so I think the uh, last thing we'll do for today is um, watch this upper stage crash. And then, uh, I guess for next time, what we'll do is work on the next part. Which are going to be the propulsion units and tanks. And see about getting those um, those guys docked. But yeah, that guy was going to survive, because these things are really robust. But, um, yeah, it's, it's not going to survive impact with the water. All right, so I guess we'll go ahead and stop here and for now, and then we'll see about getting some more stuff done with this new vehicle next episode. 
So for now, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Go ahead, like, subscribe, and comment, and I will see you next time.